Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Corey Sperlin. I'm the uh, director of the Auburn University Marching Band and member of the CBDNA Athletic Bands Committee. And uh, on behalf of the entire committee, again, uh, thank you so much for uh, your participation. Uh, this, uh, just, uh, we've, I think we've all been on cloud nine uh, with the response that we've received uh, to the symposium so far. Uh, you've probably uh, noticed that uh, the previous session title is the same as this session title, but I assure you that the information is uh, very different. Uh, this is much more about uh, the marching band functioning in the uh, virtual world as opposed to uh, digital apps uh, that help us with in-person instruction. Uh, our uh, clinician, our presenter, uh, Brian Britt is the Associate Dean and Director of the Marching Band at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, he also has uh, high school experience having served as a music supervisor in the state of Texas. So I think you will find that he has quite a, bit, uh, quite a bit of information to offer. I was really astounded in my early discussions with him about the session. Uh, he has concepts already in place that are really great, not to mention uh, those that he has uh, planned moving forward. So again, I think you're going to get a lot of great information here. So without further ado, I'll turn things over to uh, Brian Britt. Hey, Corey, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to, to be here today to share with everyone. Uh, really want to thank uh, you and Barry and all the members of the CBDNA Athletic Band Committee uh, for your hours and hours of work planning this vitally important symposium. And especially just for your kind invitation to share a few thoughts with y'all here today. Uh, obviously, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, so I'm gonna do my best to leave some time uh, afterwards uh, to answer questions uh, from the chat or from the Q&A at the end. I'm also gonna host a, a Zoom Q&A tonight along with my colleague, Dr. Brian Wolf at 7.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And uh, Corey's gonna share that meeting uh, within the chat as well so everyone will have a chance to uh, get hooked in with that. So uh, as we mentioned earlier, it is time to go virtual. And uh, uh, you know, my part of this is, is gonna start off mostly with just how do we try to maintain some sort of sense of community uh, despite the social distancing that we're dealing with. You know, it goes without saying that there's never been a time in any of our lifetimes where the sense of community provided by our organizations has been more important than it is right now. Uh, to the students in our program, uh, to the faculty and staff leading our program, to the universities of which we are a part and the communities that we serve, including our entire alumni base. Simply put, we need each other now more than ever to cope with this challenge and to overcome this challenge. As we try to determine the best path forward, we tend to focus on what we need to do and how we're going to do it. Instead, I would encourage us all to slow down and focus on asking ourselves these questions. We need ourselves, we need to ask, our students need to ask, uh, we need to ask our colleagues, our alumni, our friends and donors, why it is that our band matters. Why are we doing this as professional educators? Why do current students continue to participate in our band programs and why did the alumni participate? Why do our friends and donors continue to support us? And what does the band do for them that enriches their lives and feels truly irreplaceable uh, and becomes even more valuable, especially in a time of isolation like this? I believe that maintaining a sense of community starts with everyone within the community answering these why questions. Um, and, and these things will be put into action through what we do and how we do it as a faculty and staff, as a student leadership team, and as rank and file members. You know, a couple of years ago, I read uh, Ryan Holiday's book, The Obstacle is the Way, and it helps confirm many things I already believed about overcoming challenges. In the context of this present challenge, it has transformed my approach to problem solving greatly. I strongly recommend this book to each of you as a useful resource uh, as you continue uh, to work to try to find as many solutions as you can and to provide a hopeful tone for your organizations as you work to successfully navigate the crisis we currently find ourselves in. So that said, COVID-19 is the obstacle and it is also the way forward or the path forward. 
you know, recently I was enjoying a long ride, uh, bus ride back from Atlanta following a convincing defeat at the hands of our friends from LSU. And uh, during that bus ride, I took time to reflect on what I felt like the next steps our band program would take along the continuum of improvement based on what we had done this past season. So then I spent the next couple of weeks uh, visiting with colleagues and reflecting and trying to come up with actionable plans based on these reflections and assumptions. And then the pandemic happened and everything changed. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm the only one that, that felt this, but you know, the next several days, I, I kept trying to retrofit the plans that we'd made uh, to advance our program um, in the context of the pandemic. But that just left me feeling frustrated angry, disappointed, and frankly, very anxious. But then I stopped and I remembered the things I learned while reading The Obstacle is the Way. In the context of our band programs, the pandemic is the obstacle, albeit a major obstacle, but it is just an obstacle. It is also the way forward and accepting this fact is the first step towards any successful planning to overcome the challenges before us. So with that in mind, I took time to accept the reality that things were not going to progress as I had planned or hoped. And I just sat and experienced uh, the frustration and anger and anxiety that went with that. I just sat in it for a while. And I consciously let go of the plans that I had made, uh, realizing that they were not going to happen and I needed to stop trying to fight it. You know, at a certain point, I think I sort of felt like the, the night in Monty Python from the uh, Holy Grail, you know, it's like, here goes an arm, there goes an arm, there goes a leg, there goes a leg, it's just a flesh wound, I'm gonna figure this out. No, I realized I cannot continue to hold on to this plan and try to retrofit and make it, make it work. Instead, I sat down and took out a blank legal pad and went to work to overcome this obstacle. So starting with the blank page, I listed everything about this pandemic and its potential impact on our band program. I then identified all the items that I could have some influence or some modicum of control over and began to list the resources that we have here at Oklahoma that we could collectively leverage towards our new goal of not only surviving this pandemic, but actually thriving within it. Then I narrowed my focus to four specific goals for everyone within the program. And I'm sorry, I don't know about acronyms. This makes no acronym at all. It's just what we need to do. So if you can come up with a cool acronym, I would love to hear it. Uh, but so here are the four things that, that I put together. One, connect everyone within each section of the band to our unique organization or community with a proactive focus, especially on incoming freshmen who are gonna feel especially lost uh, with the, the loss of our normal framework. Secondly, encourage everyone to remain hopeful for what lies ahead, both during this time period and beyond it, with the goal of doing our part to help keep everyone as mentally and emotionally healthy as possible. Third, focus on individual and collective growth of our students as performers, musically and physically, and as people within the parameters of our virtual environment until we are able to return to in-person collaboration. And then fourth, if we do those first three things well, we will equip ourselves to put engaging and inspiring shows onto the field or onto YouTube or wherever quickly once we have the privilege of returning to our field, hopefully. So all this has to, get, uh, has to do with getting us into an aspect of thriving within a virtual environment. So the first thing I tried to do is identify the resources that we had. You know, the strongest resource that any of us has or the people that surround us, uh, which I think is what makes this so difficult right now because the people aren't immediately around us. Uh, and so staying focused on the people around us, our staff, our students, our administrators, everyone and their desire to stay connected is the fuel that will make everything happen. Secondly, books and ideas. I've already shared one book with you, uh, ideas. I'm so grateful to CBDNA and the Athletic Band Committee for going ahead and doing the work it took to put this together. I've gotten so many wonderful ideas today just by sitting here and listening. Uh, and, and the power of those ideas and no, no one having to be the person to come up with all of them, I think is, is tremendous. So books and ideas are, are essential. And then finally, uh, relevant technology. For us, the three that we, we zeroed in right away were Zoom, YouTube, and Finale, which brings us to a list of action items. 
the first action item for us was money announcement emails. I know that sounds like super old school, uh, but during the fall semester, I sent out emails early each weekday morning that include our rehearsal plan for the day, important reminders about things coming up, and then a quote from a world-renowned leader that is appropriate to the time of the semester. Uh, Monday announcements also have a reminder calendar for the next three weeks events so that things don't sneak up on, on our students. Students seem to really appreciate these emails, which is astonishing since they seem to really hate email. Uh, but if I, don't, if I don't send the email out or if something happens and it's stuck in my outbox by nine o'clock, my email inbox blows up. Where's the email? I need to know what's going on. Uh, so once school mo moved to online this spring, I began sending out once a week announcements on Monday mornings uh, to all the students who had registered for auditions this year. Uh, my objective in doing that was to keep students connected, informed, and encouraged. The next thing that we did, our second action item, was to start a Start With Why book club. I mean, all the language you heard earlier, I wasn't trying to plagiarize, uh, but it's, yeah, I, thought, I felt like it was really relevant once, once the pandemic started and, and our school plans uh, changed. Um, there was a lot of anxiety everywhere. And as that anxiety surrounding the pandemic grew, I felt it was really important to keep students engaged in an activity that would give them a positive and productive emotional outlet, uh, rather than just being on social media, being bombarded by all of the information, some of, some of it immediately relevant and some of it just uh, really concerning, uh, but they needed a chance to take a break from that and stay connected to what their why is. Why did they choose to come to the University of Oklahoma? Why did they choose their de degree path? Why did they choose to be in our band program? Uh, and my hope is that by doing that, we would keep them connected to that why, and that would help them push through that immediate anxiety and give them some, some staying power, power to get through uh, the uncertainty at the onset of the pandemic. Additionally, the author, Simon Sinek, uh, announced at about that time a six-week book study in conjunction with the upcoming release of this book's uh, 10th anniversary edition. So we joined in. Uh, our activities included uh, weekly readings and uh, discussing of one of the six uh, sections and then attending a Friday Q&A for an hour with the author uh, with questions submitted from all over the world. It was really a, a, a fun outlet and a great way uh, just to stay connected with some of the young folks in our band program. Uh, I found it extremely encouraging uh, to see uh, the hopefulness in our students and how they would interact in that Zoom environment just as they discussed and considered each other's points of view. Uh, and I think we all found out that all of us were anxious about what was going on. And I think that helped bring down a little bit of the angst that, that uh, surrounded the, the migration to online school. Uh, I felt like it was really valuable. And in fact, this summer, our entire band is gonna be doing a study on this book. We're gonna do it with the leadership team and then they're gonna do small groups within uh, their, their uh, section groups because I think it's gonna be really important to stay focused on that as things are, are still pretty fluid and uncertain in the fall. That leads to action item number three. Uh, our student leadership's initial response to the pandemic. Uh, we informed our student leadership team uh, of their selection to the team on Monday, April the 13th. We sent them a, hey, congratulations email, and also asked them to spend the next four days thinking um, a great deal about what they believe would be the top 10 reasons why incoming students might opt out of the 2020 audition process or other things that might just have them uh, anxious. Uh, after those four days, we hosted a leadership Zoom meeting that Friday, the 17th of April, uh, principally to establish a, a clear channel of communication. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the students got firsthand information from, from our faculty and staff to keep them informed about what was going on within the university in terms of planning for the fall, and also more importantly, what was not, because there was a lot of second, third, fourth, fifth-hand conjecture going on uh, pretty virally on social media that was needlessly upsetting. And I think uh, being in an administrative role at the university and being in a lot of the planning meetings, it was helpful to me to be able to bring to them and say, hey, here's what I can tell you about this. Here's what I know to be true right now. Uh, here's what I know not to be true that you're hearing. Uh, and so that equipped the leaders then to take that information uh, to the students within their sections 
and really helped quell and dispel rumors and keep the anxiety level a little lower. Also, I wanted to really work to redirect the student leaders energy to things that they could make happen, like contacting all of the new students who registered to audition to introduce themselves and pledge their health in the students successfully transitioning uh, into college and also into preparing their audition materials. Secondly, uh, checking on all of our returning members to make sure that they were safe and healthy and encouraging them to continue preparing uh, for the auditions and just to let them know if there's anything that they could do to help them as well. I think just finding out that you're not alone in this is, is really crucial. And finally, something fun was just to encourage everyone, especially returning members, to share show ideas. Uh, you know, what a great diversion. Take your mind over to think about being on the field in the stadium again at some point and uh, what, what would be a, 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 you know, something that would be topical or fun to perform. Uh, and these, these leaders contacting their peers and encouraging them yielded really strong results. Uh, this year, uh, our WIND um, audit, auditionees who registered, 89% of them auditioned, which was only 2% less than last year. 93% of the percussion who registered for audition followed through. That was only 1% less than last year. And 82% of our color guard audition, which was only 3% less than last year. So those student leaders made a huge difference, uh, both in the quantitative and qualitative results of our audition process that concluded a couple of weeks ago. Action item four for us was we organized a series of audition preparation masterclasses uh, for our WIND students during the month of April. There were five uh, Wednesdays in April and every Wednesday afternoon we had section masterclasses with the goal of getting our students connected to staff and other students, providing specific instruction and practice techniques, helping our students succeed, and preparing to use this environment for summer and or fall preparation if necessary. Uh, you know, the format we used was weekly 45 minute Zoom sessions to make announcements, answer questions, and help students prepare our uniform set of audition materials. Uh, our, our audition materials are full range chromatic, seven major scales uh, in multiple octaves from C to G flat around the circle of fourths, uh, and then two contrasting etudes similar to all state or all region etudes that are 16 to 20 bars in length. Uh, these sessions were led by myself, my colleague, Dr. Brian Wolf, and returning teaching assistants, Hannah Rudy and Tim Pardue. And within those meetings, what we did, we shared our evaluation instrument with the students so they would understand what the judges will be listening for. We shared practice strategies for working out the technical and musical details successfully. And we shared practice resources such as worksheets and MIDI recordings. And I wanna share a little bit of that with you now because I felt like this would be a good pilot program for what we might end up doing uh, during the this, this summer and perhaps even the fall. So let me pull this up real quickly. See if I can put my technology skills to work. All right, so now hopefully you can see, uh, this is basically the first four measures of our clarinet A2, uh, technical A2. And so what I did is I put this into Finale and created a, a, a recording, you know, nothing revolutionary, uh, but full value, it sounds something like this. Okay, so there it is. The, the, that's the finished product with musical direction, correct articulation, dynamics, and all that at full tempo. Well, for a lot of students, that's pretty intimidating, especially some of our rural kids. Uh, you're looking at that. And there's a lot of ink on the page, and, and hearing that, they would be kind of freaked out. So I also shared these materials. Basically, each of these lines is a measure plus the release note in the next measure, uh, and we can listen to that at the, at the performance tempo as well. I'm sorry, this is actually the, the this is going to be the half tempo. So I would, I would share with them this half tempo one so they could work on it at a comfortable tempo. It gives them a chance to look ahead, physically cover, take a good breath. So what I did is I made these things available to the students uh, in a Dropbox so that they could study 
and practice, even if they were isolated, didn't have access to a private teacher, they would have recordings at 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100%. Uh, and they could practice it in this jigsaw puzzle mess, uh, method, even at full tempo. And they've got time to look ahead, get ready. Etc. So it just trying to give the students a chance to have tools to uh, be even more self-sufficient in preparing what they're going to do and to try to do it as, as well as they possibly can. All right, so let's get back to this. So again, trying to provide our students with materials so that they don't get despondent about getting prepared. Uh, we had weekly check-ins with them. Uh, we would do a uh, live playing assessment. There were times when I would have students send me videos that we would go over in the masterclass format. Uh, I also told students, I said, as many times as you wanna send me a mock audition video, I will break it down for you and send you an email with information. Uh, and the really cool thing about this, we had a little over 50 students that attended our master classes over the five weeks uh, consistently. And uh, of all the students that came, they all followed through an audition, 100%. And I'm only aware of two of them uh, that didn't fare well enough to actually earn a spot. Uh, so I felt like it was a really successful thing uh, and seemed like it brought a, a, a great deal of hope to the students as, as we went along. So now that brings us to our virtual summer plans. Uh, we had a welcome meeting this past Friday. Uh, and again, we just tried to encourage, uh, connect, encourage, grow, and equip equip the students from where we are right now. Uh, we welcomed everyone into or back into the band, tried to set a tone of hopefulness, uh, and then we acknowledged the elephant in the room. Here's what we know and here's what we don't know. Uh, and just, you know, the notion that, you know, the virus is in charge of this. The virus is going to tell us when we're able to do things and when we're not. Uh, and we just have to be uh, steadfast in our focus of getting past it. Uh, and rallying around each other uh, to do this together so that no one feels isolated and alone as they have to do that. Uh, we also answered a lot of questions for them to help alleviate their fears and concerns and they asked some great questions and things that none of us on the faculty or staff frankly would have thought of. Uh, you know from an 18 year old freshman coming in there were things that they were thinking about that we that were in the gaps between anything that we thought about. So I think it was a really good use of our time to get together. Uh, after we did that we broke out into section rooms uh, which provided students a chance to uh, meet their leaders and for the leaders to set up their social media uh, pages and group me and all those kind of things, uh, start putting together practice buddies uh, so people can help mentor each other throughout the summer and, uh, and just to kind of create some momentum and to get things rolling and, and just take a brief break from just the, the misery of dealing with the, uh, the pandemic day after day. Uh, we've got a couple things coming up here soon. This next week, at the end, a uh, week from tomorrow, or yesterday rather, a week from today, actually, uh, our leadership team uh, will undergo some training. Uh, our main focus is going to be to ensure that everyone on the leadership team understands all of the whys that were previously mentioned so that we can get to work on what and how we're going to do things. Uh, the what key things that our, our leaders and staff are going to have to provide the general membership are a positive culture of hope, encouragement, excitement, and inclusion. Uh, they're going to have to provide the example of the right mindset uh, of working the problem, of not being beaten down by the problem, but looking at the problem and working it. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time is Apollo 13. And my favorite scene is when the guy comes into the break room with this bag of random stuff that's from what would be on the capsule up in, in space. And they've got a round air filter and a square air filter. And it's like, you gotta take the stuff on this table and make these two things connect. That's essentially what our, our leaders are gonna have to do this year. So they're gonna have to have the right mindset and they're gonna have to have the right skill sets musically, physically, and logistically. They're also gonna have to model a tremendous amount of positive flexibility and adaptability, a willingness to prepare for multiple scenarios that will never see the light of day, uh, and an ability to let go of it if we don't get to use it, and the ability to adapt and thrive and lead those around them to do the same. I think if we could do that one thing, we will do more to help keep our students healthy and safe, uh, mentally and physically, as we continue to navigate uh, this pandemic.
So putting all that what stuff into action this summer is going to look like this. Um, our section leaders and squad leaders will divide their sections into preliminary squad groupings to ensure connection and assistance on an ongoing basis. Uh, we talked about practice buddies already. Uh, one of the things that we're going to enact uh, is uh, call and response warmups. You know, like a lot of times our trumpet players are in the band hall doing routine during the day. You know, one one leads, the other answers, and so you're listening to each other play, you're evaluating, and you're and you're comparing your sound with their sound. Uh, there'll be some great chances to do that either through recorded call and response warmups or students getting together uh, to do that online or at a safe distance in their communities. And again, the freshman focus, ensuring that all of our freshmen have the information they need about OU and the band so they don't get skittish and just freak out and have that fight or flight instinct and they just stay with what they know. I uh, really hope that we can help as many students as possible uh, avoid that outcome. Our next item is uh, Friday Fundamentals and Fellowship, which will actually happen as kind of like the meat and the sandwich of our, our leadership meeting next week. Uh, what we have uh, one June event and one July event. Normally these are on campus from 4 to 10 p.m. on Fridays. Um, and we do a music session in the afternoon for a couple of hours, have a snack, go outside for a marching session, and then pizza and fellowship, get to know everybody, uh, stop, stop feeling quite as awkward. And that way when kids come back and uh, to camp in August, they already know some people and even recognize people they don't know so they don't feel like a stranger or a strange lamb. Now, obviously we can't do that in person this summer. Uh, so we're gonna be doing some things uh, virtually uh, this will be our, our Friday Fundamentals of Fellowship virtual timeline. You can see kind of how we have it broken down here. So we'll, we'll organize it this way. We'll do uh, woodwind and brass groups. Um, we'll be split in between uh, breathing in the full group. We'll do some call and response warm-ups. Our, our leadership team is currently working on some of those as well as some other faculty and guests that may contribute uh, to serve as models for that. Um, so in that format, what we'll do is we'll have uh, the call and response will be streamed uh, where they can see that and it happens and, and then everyone is muted and but they play back so they're listening and evaluating to their own sound. Uh, we can all we may also try to see what we can or can't do with different microphone setups online. There'll be some trial and error for sure. Uh, but our, our goal in that is that, you know, not only would we, we be as good as we hope to be, I really hope we can be better through greater individual awareness and equipping them to fish for themselves, frankly. Uh, I think we can, we can make the most of this to where it's not just a, uh, trying to keep from, have the program have atrophy. We may actually emerge from this stronger if we do it the right way. Uh, we'll also share uh, pregame and show, uh, halftime show music with the full group. We'll share uh, finale recordings of the tunes, uh, share a hit list for technical passages. I'm gonna put together some technique sheets uh, you know, because obviously you don't need to break down an entire opener, a uh, two minute opener for a marching show. It doesn't have the technical density that that clarinet technique a A2 did. But, you know, take specific licks that are always problematic in our traditional pregame show. Identify the most demanding licks from within the different parts within our first show or two. Make worksheets out of that. Record those so that students can practice. I guarantee you the freshmen are going to practice their tails off because they don't want to seem like freshmen. And I know the leaders will do it because we'll make them do it. So now we've got over two thirds of the group on board. And you know, if two people can get one other people to do it, we're golden. So that's gonna be our strategy for getting everyone excited and to get some momentum uh, going towards our individual music development. Additionally, you can see on the timeline there, uh, some conditioning, marching, uh, movement, physical training, things of that nature. Uh, these, this last year, uh, my colleague, Dr. Brian Wolf, worked with some of our health exercise science majors to produce a semester long uh, battery of dynamic stretches and conditioning exercises. And they're going to do the same for this summer and this fall season. And those will be rolled out uh, during this Friday Fundamentals and Fellowship event uh, in a group setting uh, so that students can do that. If they've got six square feet at home, they can do that in their house. They can go on their, on their patio or their garage or whatever and get those things done. 
uh, we'll roll out a different workout all week long or each week all summer long. And that gives another reason for our leadership to reach out to their st the students in their section. Hey, how, how are you doing on the exercise stuff? How long are you holding that plank? Are you feeling, do you feel like you understand the high mark time? Well, you know, those kind of things I think will really help with that. Uh, the other thing that they can roll out are specific body awareness and movement exercises. One of the things that I did identify on that long bus ride home uh, was, you know, as we continue to try to engage and inspire our audience, we need to get better at how we move when we're on a dot, you know, just doing, uh, I guess, organized randomization of body movement so that it's obvious our students are into what they're doing, but it doesn't look forced or awkward. Uh, we've got a couple of students uh, in our in our horn line uh, who have done multiple years of, of drum corps with blue coats are great. They're awesome kids. They're both music ed majors. Uh, one of them's a trumpet player. One of them's a guard member who plays flute in the marching band. And they're going to work with Dr. Wolf to put together an organized sequence of state of the art uh, body movement things that we can do online. And we can produce videos of that and students can do that at home. And I see that as much more positive than a kid who's in a brand new environment in front of 300 people they've never met and they're not comfortable moving their body saying, okay, act natural, do this. They can do this in the privacy of their own home, get past that initial awkwardness, hopefully, so that they can be much more confident when we ultimately do get to do that outdoors. So again, there's another one where I think we actually come out a little bit ahead. Um, we will uh, be experimenting also some with some possible section breakouts uh, to see if we can uh, allow for some squad work as we go along. Uh, and we'll introduce our audition routine as well as just stationary fundamentals like posture, horns up and down, uh, low mark time, high mark time, drag turns, initiating movement forward and initiating movement backwards. I don't know about your band, but initiating movement is always one of the weakest things that we do, you know, getting one to do that really convincingly. This gives us a chance to focus on that really important aspect of whether we're moving forward, backward, or laterally. Which brings us to preseason camp. Uh, generally, our camp begins the Saturday nine days prior to the start of fall semester, which always begins on a Monday. And right now, uh, in theory, uh, it's still the plan for this year. Uh, our basic format for rehearsals is we would do a morning block, like say 8 to 1030, depending on how hot it's going to be, we might start earlier. Uh, a couple hours off and then afternoon, uh, we're indoors, students are either in a sectional or they're probably in line checking out uniforms on their assigned day. Then after dinner, we return outside for a couple of hours to get some more drill on the field at that time. Right now, we're planning to eliminate any sort of individual sectionals uh, on, on the small individual section level. Um, so if we have cool weather, we may be looking at sectionals outdoors. We have lots of trees around our field. In fact, each section has its own tree. Uh, they may do some work out there that way. Uh, if it's hot, we may be investigating uh, doing some things indoors in our concert hall, which seats about 1200. So we could just have the woodwinds uh, scattered out tremendously. Same with the brass, but only after we've conferred with our OU Health uh, Science Center experts to see if that is going to be advisable or not. You can see this slide here. It gives you a little idea of what, what our, our typical uh, season camp would be like. Uh, sort of the visualization of what I just described to you earlier. So that's that status quo. Uh, assuming that we're probably not going to be able to do that, now we start to look at um, adjustments in the default. So our, our fall rehearsals, plan A is uh, in person, as close to normal as possible, all outdoors. Uh, we meet in the afternoons from 4.30 to 6.30, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays if we have a home game. Uh, if, we, if not, we're typically traveling, but who knows what's gonna happen on Fridays this, this semester. Uh, we'll keep our, or plan A would be same rehearsal structure uh, where we would be in a conditioning block. Uh, we're typically very well spread out there to begin with. We'll adjust as needed for that. Typically drumline and guard start in sectionals. Uh, then at that point, after just a, a real quick physical warm up, um, woodwinds and trumpets typically are learning their dots with Dr. Wolf. And then mellophones and the low brass sections are divided up with myself and the three graduate assistants for uh, instructor led uh, music preparation. And so for the first week of a, of a show prep, we're doing that so that everyone's getting the same markings. We're starting and ending phrases the same way. We're installing dynamics. 
uh, so that every section's got the same idea, same tempos, things of that nature. So half an hour of that, a five minute transition, uh, and then the people that were marching are now in sectionals and vice versa, same setup. Then another five minute transition break, a little bit of forced fellowship. And then we're into arcs, uh, which will probably be quite large uh, or maybe just some giant block to facilitate um, uh, safe social distancing. Uh, and then uh, Lord willing, we'll be able to do some, some music and drill synthesis uh, to wrap up our, our rehearsal. So that would be plan A, which is business as usual. We go into plan B, which would be a modified in-person uh, schedule, uh, same time frame. Uh, possibly we've got uh, an entire another area out south of uh, our softball stadium, which is primarily used for parking. It's still grass. We could line a field out there and spread out even more if we need to. Uh, or we could look at doing an hour each uh, with the, the groups that you see there. Uh, woodwinds and guard could go one hour. Uh, brass and drum, I could go another hour and then perhaps we split into sectionals for an extended period of time in that remote area. Uh, looking at staging everything in a four step blocking to allow for social distancing and movement and perhaps focusing on the individual body movement that we talked about before, as well as, uh, you know, just kind of the basic ways you learn to uh, manipulate blocks in March Man Tech. The block goes forward, the block passes between itself, it comes back, it makes a parallel, you know, how to make it seem like you're moving when maybe you really aren't. Uh, we could do some of those kind of things until it's safer uh, to do more intricate drill. Uh, we're also looking at possible video submissions of pass-offs uh, for staff to review rather than doing in-person up-close pass-offs if that's deemed to be unsafe. Uh, and we're also working on strategies for how do we divide our band into groups of uh, 50, 40, 30. Uh, we're just sort of in a holding pattern on that um, so that we could do small group work, larger group work, uh, or even if we need to get into individual uh, practice time, if needed, we could do that. All right, so uh, if that doesn't happen, if classes are pushed to exclusively online method of delivery, we would go to plan C, which is uh, completely virtual via Zoom. And that's where our Friday fundamental stuff this summer is really gonna come in handy. I think by having success with those two events, the students are not gonna look at that with as much disdain that, you know, and I think, you know, the student leaders, if they feel good about it, then they can talk it up. Hey, hey, it's not the best thing, but it was pretty cool this summer. Let's do this. Let's, let's have some fun. Let's get some things done with what we can focus on what we can do rather than what we can't. Um, so that gives us a chance to start in the big room. We're, we're working on uh, structures for large groups, as well as actual section breakouts, uh, even down to squad breakouts through um, uh, the use of a Google Sheet that would have uh, multiple active links that the students just go click on and go to uh, so that they can do whatever they need to do, either musically or visually, to make that time viable. Um, again, this would be another way we could use our call and response warm ups. We can do breathing gym together. We can do physical training. We can do body movement. We could do all of that in that environment. It's just not our first choice, obviously. That brings us to okay, so we're not going to perhaps be in the stadium if we're in that environment. Uh, what, you know, what's our motivation? What are we working on? What's our project? What's our, what's our unified thing that we rally around? Well, our idea is that we would continue to do uh, uh, specific performance videos, uh, expanded beyond maybe what we did this spring. Uh, you know, our, our, our Wind Symphony did one, uh, Symphony Band's currently finalizing one. We did a virtual Boomer Sooner thing. Um, moving beyond that to uh, things that include music, dance, and body work, uh, perhaps even in, in, in uniform or in where we could bring in people maybe to do movement master classes, uh, use a tune from the show that we were going to do first uh, and, you know, give the students a unified clip track they record. Uh, our video production majors within the band are able to put that together in Camtasia. Um, and that gives us a, a product to share. You know, we, maybe we have a unified theme of uh, frontline support, military appreciation as we get closer to Veterans Day. Uh, saluting our alumni, uh, things that are hopeful, entertaining, humorous, inspiring, uh, and possible interdisciplinary work with our journalism school. We, we've got video production majors, we've got broadcast journalism majors. Uh, perhaps this could be something that gets rolled into a, uh, a, a capstone project. So finding ways to, to be relevant within our university community, but also providing a finished product that could go up on the video board uh, for whoever happens to be there, or if it's a pay-per-view game early in the season, maybe that's actually broadcast. 
And so it gets more views and we continue to be connected uh, with our alumni, with our, our fan base, our donor base, so that uh, we, can, we can provide hope and encouragement to them so they're not missing out on, on seeing us. So then that brings us to uh, home games, which is sort of the, the, the big question. Uh, we fleshed out a couple of, of different scenarios that we're looking at. Uh, and I wanna emphasize, this is completely fluid. Uh, and this is Brian Britt uh, speculating. This is not based on any conversation with anyone at Oklahoma Athletics. Uh, this is strictly brainstorming myself and, and friends and colleagues of things that might work for us. So scenario A, perhaps there's a reduced number of fans in the stands um, and, and possibly as a result, we expand the seating area of the band or relocate them to a different part of the stadium. Uh, possibly, uh, you know, they put this, they decide to jam all the fans between the 10 yard lines on either side. Um, and then we're in the end zone, making it happen down there. Uh, scenario B would be a reduced number of fans in the stands and perhaps we platoon the band uh, in halves. So let's say uh, the entire band comes out and performs half or pregame. Uh, the first half people that are assigned go up into our expanded seating area and they support the team during the first half. Uh, the other half maybe heads uh, into the athletic facility, the field house uh, or somewhere large where they can spread out and they just relax, watch the game on a big screen and wait for halftime, come back. Everybody performs at halftime. And then the group that didn't play in the stands, the first half is on duty, the other is off duty until our post game concert or something of that nature. So just again, uh, very loose, but trying to think of, of ideas. Uh, scenario C is a reduced number of fans in the stands and possibly relocating the band outside the stadium. Maybe we're in the football practice area uh, where we can watch the, the, the screen to see what's going on and they pipe in the sound and keep us engaged that way for the limited number of fans that are there. Or there are track facilities across the streets. We could be in the stands over there. We can see the video board from there and can, and can stay engaged. You know, maybe they have a camera on us when we're playing so that we remain an important part of that in-game experience uh, and don't risk becoming irrelevant as a result of the pandemic. Uh, scenario D, no fans at all, but the band attends and we just dominate the entire uh, side of the stadium. You know, everybody's got five seats between them. It's Giganta Band and uh, the Boomer Sooner machine is in full force. Uh, and we're the only ones in the stadium that's not wearing a football uniform or a referee uniform. Uh, scenario E, no fans, no band. We go back to the, the videos that we produced earlier uh, and other uh, audio media. Maybe we produce uh, recordings of our usual stand tunes so that they stay in a rotation. Uh, and that our, our marketing and game management folks continue to embrace the importance of, of what's unique about us. Again, I know that's a lot to take in and it's still completely fluid. Uh, we're just trying to have as many scenarios ready to go once athletics knows enough about what's gonna go on with football. And then we can start looking at, at our, our part of that. Um, which then brings us to travel. Um, you know, More and more people are, are talking about the uh, the lack of a likelihood of any travel. Uh, I know uh, Big Ten, I believe, has is, is already uh, made their decision about that. I think others are, are still pending. Some institutions have been told they're not traveling. We have not been, been told that yet. Uh, just to give you a little history of how we are, are set up, since 1994, uh, Oklahoma has had a band presence at every away football game, uh, at least a pet band. And for us, a pet band is typically two bus loads to a conference game uh, or, or 50 students uh, to a non-conference game or whatever will fit onto the, the extra athletic plane. Our full band travels to Dallas to play Texas every year because that's exactly halfway between our campuses. Uh, and we're hoping we'll be able to do that again this year. Um, you know, we, we travel a lot. We travel to Oklahoma State every other year. Uh, and then we've had a, a pretty fortunate uh, postseason travel schedule as well. Typically, we know where we're going by March 1st. Uh, February 1, I, I will send out to the athletic director and say, hey, based on what looks like to be the most competitive games, here's our recommendation for full band and pet band. What do you think? And since that time, I've been sending every, every couple of weeks, hey, I know there's a lot going on. Has there been any change? And it's like, hey, thanks for your patience, nothing yet. So uh, once athletics has a plan in place for away games, then we'll have some uh, in-depth conversations uh, to determine what level of band presence they want. Then we'll flesh out, okay, what's our, what are our procedures gonna be? What, what, what sort of protocols are we gonna do 
Uh, and that's going to be based on what OU Health Science tells athletics that they tell us. Uh, and the bottom line is in all of these home and away game scenarios is the health and safety of the students is the first concern. Uh, we're not going to do anything reckless. Uh, but I also want to make sure that we're not just uh, throwing away the baby with the bathwater uh, and risk uh, providing safe opportunities. Uh, but again, there will be more than an abundance of caution as we as we move forward on this. Uh, so that brings us to the path forward. Uh, I, I believe strongly that all of us must stay connected to our whys and with, with those of everyone within our organization. We must remain hopeful and maintain a laser focus on what we can do. Uh, we have to work actively and intentionally to do our best to let go of negative thoughts about what we cannot do. It's just how it is. Uh, it's the way. The obstacle is the way. Um, I'm planning to spend some time reading and studying the works of great leaders who have helped overcome significant cultural challenges worldwide um, to see how I can, can learn from them. You know, what, what things did they do that worked? What things did they not do? How can I make brand new mistakes instead of their mistakes? Uh, and ultimately we have to communi communicate and project as much hope as possible to our people. We're gonna have to be patient and flexible, create numerous abundant good plans and I think another thing that's really good for all of us, and, and perhaps I bring this because I do serve part-time as an administrator, is consider the scope of this problem for your university chancellor or president, or your provost, or your dean, or your athletic director. I mean, there are real life and death things that they're thinking about, uh, and there is uh, there are real fiscal things that they're having to look at. In athletics, they're looking at eliminating entire programs, which affects all those people's uh, all of those people within that program and, and their whys, you know, the things that they aspire to do. So I think if we can find ways to show that we empathize and that we want to be a part of the solution, uh, we've got a chance to build better relationships than we've ever had before. And finally, we've got to continue to continue to focus on working the problem and encouraging each other. Uh, I'm so, again, so grateful for this opportunity to be at this virtual symposium and to share these ideas and to steal as many others as I can get. Uh, and I think uh, in the spirit of encouraging each other, uh, Corey, uh, do we have any, any questions or anything? I know I've talked an awful long time. Well, we had uh, one person ask if the OU conditioning routine is available for others to model. Uh, yeah, I, I will, uh, I'll talk to our students about that. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Wolf uh, wouldn't mind uh, sharing that. So what we'll do is as we get that put together, uh, we'll share that because they're actually doing that as, as part of some academic work. And I'm sure their professors would be glad to, to have the, their students work being shared. Absolutely. And uh, that was the only uh, unanswered question there in the, in the Q and A. So uh, you're very thorough. <laughs> uh, we so much appreciate Brian, this great information and certainly the positive tone that you presented for the rest of us. Uh, I have great respect for what you do and uh, I know uh, I'm very interested in what you're reading of that, uh, in terms of leadership moving forward, because I, I agree with you. That's definitely the approach we all need to take. Uh, Barry? Yeah, uh, Brian, uh, one of the questions that popped up as well, uh, you made reference to a book that you were reading and using with your students. So I think for clarification, could you oh. could you read it? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I short circuited on on sharing some of those graphics. I apologize. Uh, okay. The, the book that we're getting ready to embark on is Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Uh, his last name is S-I-N-E-K, uh, for those that aren't familiar with his work. Uh, and, the, and a really good thing about him is, is there are some great uh, YouTube videos where he's giving a presentation of like really short TED Talks or slightly longer. Uh, so there's abundant resources as well as like with the book club that we did this spring. His Friday discussion videos are all saved on his YouTube channel. So there's abundant resources to bring that book to life. Uh, also, again, the, the, uh, the Obstacles the Way is a great one. Uh, I'm, I'm about to start on uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Uh, you know, just, uh, those are just a couple. And as, as more come up, I'll, I'll be sure and share those as we go through the summer. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Brian. Absolutely amazing information. You know, such outstanding and useful information for all of us uh, within all of our programs, not just at the collegiate level, but certainly our colleagues at the high school level as well, that many of this stuff can be transferable to that. 
Um, you know, it's a very specific plan, probably one of the most specific plans we've seen and heard of yet. Uh, so thanks for sharing that. You know, uh, your plans for Pride of, a, Pride of Oklahoma with all of us. And uh, again, to reiterate what Corey said, we just love your outlook on this situation and the optimism you bring to what you do for your students and your program. And, uh, you know, birds of a feather flock together. This is absolutely where we all must be. We've got to be optimistic, flexible, patient, and uh, together we are going to get through this. And I love the aspect that you shared, too, that in a lot of ways, our programs could potentially come out stronger because of some of this individual attention. So thanks for bringing that to light today. Absolutely, Barry. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, and the, in that vein of positivity, the last thought I would leave for us to think about you know, if you think about when you go to the doctor, if you're sick and they give you medication, uh, if you respond to the medication, you're doing well. If you react to the medication, that's a bad thing. And I, I think that has to be at the forefront of our minds that we have to respond to the things that are coming to us rather than reacting, because what we do will have a multiplier effect on our ensembles and our greater community. So uh, that's really at the heart of all this. I hope that the things I've provided will be useful. Uh, I think Corey shared that link for uh, Q&A this evening. If anyone wants to talk, I don't have all the answers, but I have most of the questions <laughs> and, and I look forward to, to visiting with anyone who's interested. So thank you. No, thank you. And Brian, if you don't mind, um, are we going to be able to share some of these slides? Will that be possible? Is that okay? Not to put you on the spot here. Oh, but... yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I apologize. Okay. I didn't get them all in there, but I'll, I'll share those materials with you so that we can get those shared. Yes, sir. That's great. There's been a lot of, lot of input from people on Facebook and certainly here uh, asking about that. So that can be, again, truly beneficial. Well, thank you once again, Brian. And again, I want to thank yeah. all of our other presenters that have presented so far today. Uh, tremendous contributions to our profession uh, for not only today and where we move forward, but for the foreseeable future. And again, doing that all with optimism. Just a couple reminders um, and some other announcements for those that may not have heard some of the things taking place earlier today. We are not going to have any breakout sessions due to the great success of responses and registrations that came in. But with that, uh, it's pretty difficult to break into some of those breakout sessions. But what we are going to do, we're going to do a follow-up with each segment of our registrants uh, following the symposium. Uh, so for our high school colleagues, Division three, Division two at the collegiate level, Division I, uh, so we can talk a little bit more specifically about some of these items that we're addressing today and tomorrow. Uh, on behalf of the Athletic Band Committee, I would like to extend our sincere thanks to all of our sponsors. Those have been playing through the breaks. Uh, they'll continue to play once again at the conclusion of this portion, uh, but for supporting us and putting this virtual symposium on. And a big thanks to Bob Rogers Travel for helping us upgrade uh, the Zoom platform so that we could, again, offer this to far more people on this platform as well as live streaming on Facebook. We're going to take a dinner break, or depending on where you live again, it may not be quite dinner yet, but we are going to take a pretty big break here. We're going to resume here back at 6.30 Central Time, and uh, we're going to have some great sessions talking about converting student leadership development to a virtual platform and tips for chapter opera operations Excuse me, for Kappa Kappa Psi and Tau Beta Sigma. That's going to be at 6.30. And then at 7.30, we've got a couple options. Uh, Elliot Cleveland, uh, the developer and owner, creator of Marching Health, is going to be joining us. He's going to talk a little bit about Marching Health and uh, the seven mistakes every marching band makes with training. He's going to spend about 20 to 30 minutes of that time. And then at 7.30, we do have that open time set up to hopefully you'll... You'll make some connections and join some of these Zoom virtual receptions that we have going on. You heard the one about Brian, Brian Britt from the University of Oklahoma, and that link is posted in the chat. And then also Josh Gall and the folks at Ultimate Drillbook, they're going to be hosting a virtual reception as well, and those are starting at 730. So thanks once again, everyone, for joining us. We hope that this information has been helpful. Make sure you meet back here at 630. Look forward to seeing you once again, and uh, have a great break.